everyone, it's Amy here, and today I'm here with a um, coloring tutorial. Um, the type of coloring I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do today is um, called cell shading. It's, um, in my opinion, the most simple and easiest and quickest way to color. Um, for this tutorial, you won't need too many tools. The only tools I'm going to be using today is um, this the toggle boxes, um, the airbrush tool, the brush tool, and the blur tool. I'm going to be just kind of assuming that you guys already know how to use paint tool side, so I'm not going to really be con explaining too much what I'm doing here on the side as in terms of like layers and clipping and all that good stuff. Um, oh, also, I'm going to um, be leaving a link in the description to a place where you can um, download my skin palette. Um, so I'll have um, the palette here for, for uh, light skin, for dark skin, and for medium skin. And you guys can take the palette and you know practice using this tutorial to color your own characters. Um, so today I'm going to be coloring one of my characters from my story of Celestial Valley. Her name is Ayame. She's this one right here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start with her skin. Um, the only thing I will say, um, this is a little tricky. Um, you're going to want to change this layer here and you're going to go up to wet edge and change it to a fringe layer and um, all that's going to do is when you make your shading you see it makes a, I don't know if you can see that but it makes a cool little like dark halo of color around your shading um, but I usually don't use that much that, it's pretty harsh. I usually um, use it like about like 50. No? Okay. And so we're going to go up here. I didn't explain this what I was doing earlier. But so right here is the base skin color. Right here is the one you're going to use as the first shadow. So we're going to go down here and you're just going to shade everywhere that needs to be shaded. So as you see, it's a super easy to do. And while doing it, you can save yourself some time. Funny thing about, you know, the funny thing about this picture, when I was sitting here drawing these um, characters for this tutorial, I only meant to draw up to their shoulders and somehow I ended up drawing their bust as well. Oh well. Okay. So here we have the um, first base. Oh, let me just make that a little bit bigger. Okay. Should have some right here too. Okay. So now we right here we have the um, base shading. So now what we're gonna do we're gonna have to uh, clip this uh, not clip this layer we're gonna have to lock the layer and then you're going to start working on the um, what I, I usually just call this the, the second stage of shadows you're going to be choosing the third darkest shadow and the fourth one and um, I'm, this is where I'm going to be using the airbrush tool and you're just going to be airbrushing um, the darker shadow in the areas where it would be darkest I'll do this. I do this with the third color. And then I toggle over to the darker color and I just repeat the same tool, but I, I mean, I, I repeat the same step, but I do this a little bit lighter. I don't want too much of the dark color. And then use the blur tool and you're just going to blend them together. Okay. 
then the next step for coloring skin um, is going to be highlights. For highlights, I usually just get a grab a Lumi layer and grab a light yellow or a, or a white. And the highlights are also super easy. You don't have to make this a fringe layer for this. I mean, you can if you want to, but it doesn't really matter. So when I do highlights, I tend not to do too many of them. This may be like some on the side of the face and a little bit on the arm. So not too many highlights. Okay, and the um, next step I'm going to be doing after I have all of this base shading is I'm going to be airbrushing some color around. So I'm going to go back up here to my skin palette. I'm going to grab the second one. And under the um, first shading layer, I'm just going to airbrush some color. So here on the cheeks, a little bit around. Just a little bit around where you, where you did your shading earlier. Not too much, so. Then you get the blur tool and you're gonna be blurring it all together. Also, um, uh, my, my settings for the airbrush tool, I, I usually just tend to put everything on 50, so my density is at 50. You're gonna wanna do that, otherwise you'll get too much color out. Like see, if I ever have it always 100, that's a lot of color and I don't want that much color. So. I usually just keep everything around 50 because, you know, it's right there in the middle. Oops. Get up to 50. Okay, and then back here to this Lumi layer. It's got a little bit more highlights on the cheeks. Oops, I forgot to add a little bit of the uh, extra shading right here on her nose. There you go. There you go. And, um, you can add any more of this, like, extra, uh, airbrush shading wherever you feel is appropriate. But that's basically how you, um, how I color the skin. See, so it's, su it's super simple, super easy, and really fast. And um, I'll be back in a little bit with the rest of her, um, with um, the rest of this picture. I'll be coloring her hair and her eyes. Stay too. Okay, be right back. Hi, everyone. Sorry about the abrupt end to the last part. I had to let my cat outside. So anyway, back with the tutorial. So um, in this part, we're going to be coloring her hair. And um, the hair for me um, tends to be the hardest part when it comes to this type of coloring because it, you do spend a lot of time on it. Um, so let me just jump right into that. Um, with the hair, um, instead of just jumping straight into the shadows like I did last time, um, I like to do some, um, add some color. It's usually, I only usually add the same three colors. It's going to be a light blue, a light yellow, and a light pink. Um, I mean, it looks kind of strange right now, but afterward, you see, it look, it's going to look pretty cool after you um, are done adding all of the uh, shadows and stuff. But um, when I do this, I only use a little bit. You don't want to use do too much of this, otherwise it gets really distracting from the rest of the picture. And then I just blur it all together. Okay. And I usually end up changing the opacity of this layer 
but um, right now I'll just have it on full opacity. But most likely it's going to be changed. The opacity is going to be lowered later on. Um, so then you're just going to do what Timmy did with the skin. You're going to be making a layer, and you're going to go up here to wet wet edge and turn into a friends layer. And here I have her um, hair palette. Um, unlike last time, this top one isn't the base. It's the highlight. So this medium, the second one right here, is the base. And um, the last two are for the shadows, obviously. So the third, uh, so I'm going to be clip, um, grabbing the third one here. And just going to be shading, you know, everywhere. There would be shadows. Oh, also, um, with the fringe, um, with the wet edge fringe layer, every single time you make a new layer, you're going to have to change it back down to um, the control back down here to 50, so you guys know. I really like using the the wet edge fringe layer because it makes all of the lines look really sharp, and I think that I think I just like the way it looks. Oops, oops! <laughs> I do that all the time. I, I normally have the um, tools here on the side memorized, so I don't have to look at them when I click them, but every once in a while I'll sit there instead of clicking um, the eraser tool, I'll click binary just like what I just did. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to speed things along and I will be back when it comes to the um, next part of the shading. So I'll be right back. Uh, as you saw, I uh, quickly just shaded in um, her hair. So now on to the next part. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another layer under all of that shadow. And I'm going to be using the um, same color that I was just using to, sh to uh, shade. I'm going to go up here and make it a fringe, you know, wet end, a wet end, <laughs> a wet edge fringe layer. That's so hard to say. And you have to put it back down to 50. And um, this time I'm just going to also put the opacity down to 50. And I'm going to add a little bit more shading around um, where I previously sh shaded, but um, just a little bit. So you're not going to use too much of this lighter shading, really. Oh, what's that? Oh, right. <laughs> Sorry, just got to fix this real quick. Okay. I do this mainly just because it looks nice. When it's done, you'll see it'll have uh, looks like your uh, hair will have like a lot of tones in it, and it'll be cool.
Okay, and then I'm gonna take the blur tool and I'm gonna blur the shading just a little bit. Like I said, I tend to keep everything around 50 or around 50. I think I got all of it. Okay. Here we go. And, um, we're gonna go back up to our main, um, shadow layer. And you're just gonna lock that layer. And I forgot to do this earlier, but I'm gonna be adding a bit of a gradient to it. So I'm gonna grab the base color. Well, not base color, sorry. I'm going to be grabbing the darkest color. And I'm just going to be airbrushing a little bit. You know, just like with the skin, just in the places that are darkest. And you're going to be blurring that together. Okay. So now we're going to um, do another layer of shading. This is why I said the hair takes a long time because I usually do lots of layers of shading on it. But this is going to be a normal layer. You don't have to use uh, the fringe layer at all. Um, so I'm going to um, take the darkest color from the hair palette. <laughs> the darkest color from the hair palette sorry <laughs> and right near the bottom where I did the shading I'm just gonna scribble some lines like this and a little bit on her bottom part of her hair So it should look like that. Looks really weird right now. I know. So um, you're going to take the uh, blur tool. And you're just going to blur the bottom of this. And blur it all the way out until you can't see any of those uh, jagged lines on the bottom. And um, for the top, since those lines aren't really crisp, I'm going to go back and I'm going to use the eraser tool and just make the lines a little bit more even and, I don't know, crisp looking. That's a word you can use to describe color. <laughs> Okay, and I usually mess around with the opacity of this because it's a little too dark. Work a little bit more on this this area. Okay. Yeah, mess around with the opacity. I always use this with all the layers. I'm constantly messing with the opacity of my layers. Get a little bit lighter. And this is around the time, um, I'm almost done with this with the hair, but this is around the time I'll go and I'll blend any of the shadows that I feel are too dark or too harsh. If you do this, make sure you only do a little teeny tiny bit. I'm 
this shadow right here is bugging me. Hmm, I like that better. Okay. Okay. And this is what I was talking about with this, um... Um, like ambient light layer. Um, I made a mistake and I had it on top of the hair when it's actually this is supposed to be under all of the shading on the very bottom. So I usually mess with that layer a little bit as in terms of uh, turning up and down the opacity. And I've decided that I'm going to add a little bit more of that um, yellow to her hair because. I don't know, in my experience, yellow and brown look all really nice together. So, I'm gonna do a little bit, add a little bit more of it, and this will also help with the highlights. Okay. Okay, and now for the final, final layer of the hair. So, now I'm going to be grabbing this very first color on my color palette and same thing, wet edge and fringe and bring that down to 50. Oops. So actually I think I'm about to make this a little bit lighter. A little bit lighter than that. I didn't choose that. <laughs> I didn't choose a light enough color. Okay. And there's a lot of ways to do highlights and a lot of ways to shade hair. This is just my way. Okay, and I usually mess around with the opacity for the highlights as well. Like I said I'm constantly messing with the opacity in my pictures. Okay, and that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all you need to do for the hair. I mean, you can always mess around with it. You know, trying different colors, seeing how it looks like with changing different, you know, from different parts of the picture, messing with the opacity. Okay, and next things next is the eyes. So, same thing, we have this base layer. Um, so we're going to be needing this 
third, darkest layer. And I do my eyes a multitude of ways, depending on what story I'm working on. Depends on how the eyes are look like. So for Celestial Valley, um, I have a set way I do these characters' eyes. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be lazy and I'm just gonna copy that over. this darkest color. I'm just gonna airbrush the top of these eyes. And blur it. Just forgot the part in the middle. Oop, that one's a little bit bigger than the other. Okay. Like I said, there's there's a bunch of ways to do eyes. Just for this particular story, I have a certain way that I do them. Okay, darker color. You know, I actually decided I'm gonna want these eyes to be a little bit more dynamic, and I'm gonna add another um, darker la layer of shading to it. Have this lightest layer and just gonna make a big old circle on the bottom and good turn the opacity down the last thing to do here usually make a loomy layer it doesn't really matter if I uh, if you grab white or like a light yellow it'll look the same pretty much grab a light blue and I'll lumilaire. It's gonna airbrush a little bit. Oop. And bring that down. Just gonna airbrush a little bit. And blur. Okay, we're almost done with the picture. One of the last things we're gonna do is working. We're gonna work on the white of the eyes. This is always my favorite part because it's literally the easiest thing to do. And. 
and her mouth. Okay. And we are done with this picture. Oh, I didn't color her hair barrettes or whatever, but it's not really that important. Um, so that's how I um, color um, Sade Shell a picture. Um, I hope you like this tutorial, and I hope it helps. <laughs> this is the first one I've ever done, so I'm sorry if I left some stuff out. Um, pretty much all for the rest of this video, I'm just going to... Um, just for fun, I'm gonna color the other two characters next to her. Um, so I'm gonna be trying to do more tutorials. Um, I might come out, um, the next one I'm thinking about doing, I'm, I'm um, probably going to do like a, um, a concept art tutorial on um, how to um, create a character or how I create my characters. Um, so. That's all. I hope you love this tutorial. Um, comment and like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Okay, bye-bye.